The following podcast is a presentation of Project Entertainment Network. Welcome to Vicious Whispers with Mark Tullius, your source for horror, sci-fi, suspense, and all things violent. Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you so much for joining me today on Vicious Whispers with Mark Tullius. Today we have episode 162. At the end of the episode, I will read the final scene from Try Not to Die at Grandma's house. So I'm excited to be done with that one. Not sure which one we will do next. Maybe I'm going to put it to a vote with the, the Facebook group, Dark and Disturbing Fear Filled Fiction. I will let them decide if you want to put a suggestion down in these comments. I will look at that as well. But it will probably either be Morsels of Mayhem. I will just use those short stories. Look to see when the last time I used stuff from Somber Stroll. Somber Stroll is what I am using right now as my uh, reader magnet. That are Morsels of Mayhem. You could buy either one of them for 99 cents on Amazon or whatever. Or you can get them free by signing up for my newsletter. So I am starting to recirculate the somber stroll one. It made me think a lot about where I was at that time. I'm not sure what year I wrote. Let's say about 2018, I'm guessing. I guess I could look it up real simple, but I'm lazy. Anyhow, but it made me think about what I was doing at that point in my life. Like I was doing a lot of jiu-jitsu and I was seeing just how powerful it was for women. My wife was training. My daughter was training. I was training with a lot of great athletes at the 10th Planet headquarters. And so that's where the story Mutual Understanding came out from. I was doing the float tank a lot and getting high all the time, which... I still kind of do. I don't do the float tank anymore. It's been a while. Maybe I'll go back. But that's where the short story Going Dark came from. I spent a lot of time in my backyard at night. That's where Safety First developed. Ultimate Wish, I think that was an older story. And other one, oh, another one that's in there also. An older story that I reworked. But it was just kind of interesting to see, like, okay, that's where I was at that point. Anyhow, we will put it to a vote on what we listen to next. I'll try to see what's been done on here. I don't want to repeat anything. The other option is to play some of TBI or CTE. Don't know how interested you guys in are in hearing that. I think it's a really good audiobook. People that have listened to it have told me uh, they really enjoy it. I think the narrator did an amazing job. So maybe we'll go with that. Who knows? Man, it's going to make it so exciting this whole week. You're not going to know. Holy shit. How are you going to deal with it? What I've been doing this week, besides taking care of a sick household, oh, my son and I are still healthy, uh, I'm trying not to get sick, but my daughter and wife have been struggling for a week. We have COVID here, so that's been interesting, trying to protect myself and my son while still taking care of them. So it's been interesting, but we shall see. I will continue my approach to this, which is loading this up with vitamins exercising like crazy, spending a lot of time outside, keeping everything open and uh, ventilated, wearing a mask in the house, and we shall see. If I get it, I get it. Really don't want my son to. If he gets it, he gets it, and we will go from there. That was one of the things I've accepted. Like, man, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So just deal with it then. Why, why fucking worry about it? Other good news. I finally got started on Ghostland. Duncan Ralston's Ghostland. Really digging it. Cool. I can't wait to do Try Not to Die in Ghostland, which he is writing right now. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to contribute to that. It'll be interesting. I need to talk to him and see what he wants me to do. I really enjoy his writing style. I'm not going to be able to do a, lot, a whole lot, I'm guessing. Hope. It's probably going to be a lot of editing. Maybe he'll let me play with death scenes. We'll see. But I'm anxious to see how that is going to work out. You never know how it's going to work with another author. I just know the end product is going to be really good. I'm halfway through this book, and my daughter already finished it, so we've been able to talk about it a little bit. So she's on book two. I should finish this in the next week. And it's, it's cool because I'm enjoying it. But it also counts as work because I'm studying it for the trend to die. So that is super cool. The other thing that was awesome about this week, I let myself, so it's definitely been a struggle trying to concentrate and be creative and, you know, set time aside for myself when I'm worried about other people, but I did it. <laughs> so luckily I, I was able to work on our fucked up little family. I had been, last week I had worked on our the dark fairy tale, really digging that. And I was going to go back on Death Fest, but still not ready on that. So instead, I just said, you know what? I'm just going to nail this first chapter. And I realized it was going to be much harder than I thought because of the sex scene. In it. it made me really think 
about whether or not I should write it. I felt I, so many times I was just feeling like it was wrong. You know, I'm having this Catholic priest in a confessional having sex with a parishioner. It just seems dirty. But then I realized I always feel that way with any sex scene. I was talking about it with my wife and saying, you know, it just feels wrong to have this priest doing it. And then all of a sudden I realized like, wait, it ain't no Messiah. The second coming of Christ or possible second coming of Christ is doing some pretty raunchy stuff. So maybe it's not a big deal. And just, I just realized, whatever, I'm going to write whatever story I need to. If it includes sex, it includes sex. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I, handling sex scenes has definitely been tough for me. It makes me uncomfortable. Talking about sex makes me uncomfortable. That's all probably due to the Catholic upbringing. I blame a lot of shit on that. So that's cool. That's where that's one reason why I'm going to write all about it in this book. In this book, though, there's going to be some interesting stuff that happens. I feel bad for this priest. Uh, I think you will as well, Father Tom. He doesn't want to be doing what he's doing, but I realized some cool stuff yesterday when I was finishing the scene. Uh, yeah, so chapter one is done. I'm going to send that to the editor today. I don't know when I'll get the early readers on it, but I'll let you guys in kind of early. And I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with it, if I'm going to do Kendall Vela or if I will be putting it out just as a book and holding on to it until then. But in it, I realized what Father Tom does with his rosary. So his rosary is going to be a big thing uh, to him, at least. And uh, yeah, just realized some really cool stuff. So it was nice finishing that. was excited about it. I told my son, I'm like, yeah, I finally finished this. I was like, look, now I have 26 more to do. So that can be a little hard to handle if you realize like, okay, that scene took probably about two weeks. It's only about 2,500 words, 26 more of those. That's a year. So, but if it took me a year to finish this whole book, and meanwhile, I am also getting out trying to die at Death Fest, and I'm also getting out finishing up trying to die at summer camp and finishing up trying to die at fuck wherever else, Wild West, whatever we got going on with so many, you know, I'm okay with that. So even if it took a year and a half, but I think I'm going to be moving pretty fast, especially now that I know Father Tom, I know his hangups, I know what he does for his penance, I know how he feels about his brother, I know a lot of these things, all these things came to me. Now I get to decide, it's like, okay, in the book, it goes from Father Tom to his brother David, names might change it, and then to uh, Machine or that name may change as well. I'm not sure if I'm going to write it that way, if I'm going to go just straight to David right now, or if I'm going to go to Father Tom's next thing, which is chapter four, and then is the following one, chapter seven. And then, so I may just take him all the way through. I'm not sure. I will figure that out this week, but cool problem to have. I don't mind. I love thinking about that kind of stuff. It fascinates me, keeps my brain happy. With the sex scenes, I almost didn't post this the other day, but I've had some... And maybe possibly inappropriate post on social media. And I was like, ah, should I put this? Should I not put this? The first one was that I had been considering, you know, that it was really wrong that I'm writing a sacrilegious scene with a priest, you know, felt wrong. But then I said, but my erection says full steam ahead. So I put that out there. There were a couple others that were like that, a little sexual. I usually don't make those kinds of jokes. But then I was thinking about it. It's like, well, it makes perfect sense. If I want a reader to feel fear, then I have to be afraid when I'm writing. I have to get that experience when I'm writing, when I'm thinking about it. The same thing with like something super disgusting. Like if I'm going to, like it has to disgust me. If I'm, if I'm writing and I'm not really disgusted by it, it's probably not going to disgust a reader. The same thing, like if I'm trying to arouse someone, then it better arouse me. So just noticed that the other day, thought I should share it. That's the rigid testing of every sex thing is like, okay does it pass this test? Like, yep, that one does. Now you guys know, every time you're reading the sex scene in one of my books, like, oh wait, did this turn him on? I don't know, did it turn you on? Let me know, put it in the comments. Not you, mom, don't need to know that one. The other nice discovery with the book is what happened to Father Tom, what kind of turned him into this sex addict and a naughty nun. And we're trying to figure out her name. So the names that have been, it's now down to three names. So we have Sister Eileen, Sister Kathleen, or Sister Angelica. 
So I'm not sure which of those, and maybe maybe it's not even going to be one of those. Those are the three that I like so far. The suggestion, if you like one of those, let me know. Send in a message, put in the comments. I'm trying to figure that out. It's not going. She's not going to have a big role at all. She'll just be probably part of a flashback. Uh, need to show you know where this guy. Eh, I don't know. Maybe we're never even going to see her. Maybe we're not going to see this naughty nun. I really want to. Maybe we'll just see a different nun that this priest has relations with. If he does, not sure what he does. I don't know. Maybe it's with another priest. Maybe he's bisexual. Haven't figured him out yet. We shall see. What do you think, Derek? Mm, I don't think he's going to like the bisexual part. But who knows? Anyhow, definitely no boys. No altar boys. That's for goddamn sure. All right, guys. <clears throat> I'm going to keep this... Okay, I'm going to keep this one short. I am going to go spend time with my son. He's been kept him here. That's why we've been able to do a lot of stuff, going outside, swimming, being active. Today we did a boxing workout. That was cool. He's doing his schoolwork online while I'm doing this. But then we are going to color some stuff for my wife and his sister to make them feel a little bit better. And what else? And then, I don't know, we'll just hang out. Anyhow. I will get back to Try Not to Die in my own house after we read the finale of Try Not to Die at Grandma's house. Thank you guys so much for putting up with me. I hope you have enjoyed the story. Some of these choices have been fun. I think today we're just going to go straight to the ending, which I'm not even sure which the correct answer was. So we could have either ran for the car or wait until more of the torpions are under the house. Both sound like good ideas. What do you think? I'm Guessing, probably run to the car. Yeah, all right. So we run for the car. We can't wait. I tell the beast to follow me. Sam can barely open her eyes. Looks like she's about to fall over. I set down the metallic rod and lift her into my arms. We don't need the fire drawing attention. I'm holding her and I can't believe how heavy she is. The last time I carried her, she was so tiny and light. We're coming back from one of Tim's Little League games and she'd fallen asleep in the car. And that was so long ago. Tim was still a good kid. Mom and dad were asking if we wanted to stop for burgers. I need to make it to the car. The beast lets out a low growl and I almost hit him for making noise. But then I see the hair raised on his back. He's looking at the tall weeds by the car. Long swaths of grass bend, almost like an invisible tractor is rolling. Torpions stream out of the tall grass and weeds. The car is still 30 feet away. Why did I have to set down the flaming rod? We're defenseless. All we can do is run. I keep readjusting my arms under Sam. She feels even heavier. We're almost to the car when a torpedo leaps. It's coming right at Sam. I turn to shield her and wait for its needle teeth to sink into my neck, but there's only a roar. The beast snatches the torpedo and snaps it in two. He's actually protecting us. Maybe it really is Tim. He fights through a dozen creatures and leads us to the car, but there are so many. They latch onto his legs and back. He throws them off, more swarm. I get the key ready, slip it in the lock and turn. I throw open the door, shove Sam inside. Tim roars again, but this time it's filled with pain. Torpions cover his chest. He tries to rip them off, but they're burrowing through his ribs. I try to help, but I stop when Tim collapses and disappears under a blanket of creatures. David, Sam gasps. I turn and see a dozen torpions inside the car. They're crawling towards Sam. I grab two and fling them out of the car but others pounce on my back. I feel the claws, the teeth. Sam scoots all the way against the door and kicks one in the face. Another leaps over me and digs its fangs into Sam's eyes. My fingers reach out to help, but another torpion bites through my wrist. Yeah, that's how the book ends. Sorry, didn't make it. Try again in the next book. Okay, no, that's not the correct answer. All right. Oh shit, this isn't even the ending. Damn it. All right. I lied earlier. We still have at least one more choice. Probably shouldn't have told you that until it got there. All right, here we go. All right, I'm counting to 100. That should be enough. But each second feels like a 1,000. Sam leans against the tunnel. Her eyes are heavy. Tim, or whatever this is, keeps shaking his head as if he's waking from a dream. 75. I remember when we were kids. They'd always make me yet when we play hide-and-go-seek or tag. I've always been the one counting. 59. 58. The torpions seem to be slowing down by the storm doors. I wonder if they've already filled up the garage. I wonder if Grandpa and Grandma are still alive. 42, 41, 40. A shriek fills the air. 
A thousand shrieks follow, all echoing the tortured wail. 37, 36. Flames burst from the first floor windows and rise up the walls. Grandpa must have had the place rigged just for this. It's all going to blow. 28, 27. Some of the torpions are coming out through the storm doors. They're clawing over each other to escape. 19, 18. Screw it. Come on. I grab Sam's hand and run. Her feet can barely stay under her. She's limp and floundering like she doesn't have any bones. I'm trying to keep her up, but I'm starting to buckle. Suddenly, she's lighter. I turn. Tim is picking her up, cradling her into his massive arms. He's running alongside, and he's fast, just like he used to be. The car is still at least 30 feet away when the torpions focus their glare on us, or rather, my torch. The stare down only lasts a second before they charge. All right, another decision. Throw the torch to distract them or use the torch to fight them off. All right, so I think, let me just make sure. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Next week will be the last final chapter, and then we will decide what will be heard next. Anyhow, I need to go back. Try to be a good husband, good father, all that good stuff. Stay healthy. Thank you so much for listening. I do appreciate you guys. Hope you have a fantastic week, and I will talk to you next episode. Later. The following podcast is a presentation of Project Entertainment Network.